The Biden administration does something right, this time on Right Angle. I'm Scott Ott with Bill Whittle and Stephen Green. This episode brought to you by the members of BillWhittle.com. And gentlemen, I think that we could probably end it right there just to start the flame war. But let me give you some details about what I'm uh, that which about which I speak. Um, there's a story in the Associated Press out of Billings, Montana, that the Biden administration is changing the approach that it takes uh, in its engagement with state and local authorities authorities and its funding decisions in how to deal with these massive forest fires that have burned thousands of homes and killed people and destroyed, of course, many, many acres of, of forest land. And um, basically, the fundamental shift is something we've talked about here on Right Angle before. They were, they're going from a model where they primarily said, let's pour efforts into stamping out the fires once they start. And they're changing to say, first of all, let's target where we fight, and secondly, let's fight before the fire starts. In other words, Stephen Green, let's thin some areas of woodlands by logging and by controlled burns so that when fires do come, uh, they're gonna be less devastating, it'll be more difficult for them to spread, and in particular, they will be concentrated around that small percentage of land that really poses a threat to human habitation. Uh, Stephen Green, it, it seems uh, almost fantastical to suggest uh, that this show would be in praise of the Biden administration's decision. What think you about this? Well, uh, you know, I come to, to to praise Biden, not to bury him, which <laughs> just <laughs> not a good enough job that on his own. He does need your help. No, no, um, I, I, I'm pleasantly shocked. You know, I spent uh, uh, four years living in far northern California, Humboldt County. Behind the Redwood Curtain was uh, the way we described it. And Humboldt County, it's about 60 miles shy of Oregon. And it's uh, it's so remote. There's only there are only three ways in and out of the county. And two of them are Highway 101, one way to the south, one way to the north. And I think it's uh, Highway 299 out to the east. And that's it. It is it is so green. It is so lush. The redwoods are the most impressive trees that anybody has ever grown or will ever grow on this planet. I just I love the scenery up there. And the reason why I mention this is that uh, it turns out the uh, the local Indian tribes up there before a stupid white men showed up would engage in controlled burns to keep their land from burning up. And this is in some of the wettest land in the world. This is the Pacific Northwest. I I was doing local radio up there when I was a kid, early 20s. And I swear to you, every day for four years, I gave the exact same weather forecast. The temperature would vary a little bit, but that was it. Uh, uh, morning fog burning off around noontime, chance of afternoon showers, highs in the mid 50s <laughs> every day for four years. And I can still do it. Um, now, imagine Southern California where it doesn't rain the way it rains in in Northern California. Imagine Southern California where you don't have that wet, dense fog rolling in almost every morning. And they haven't been doing controlled burns or brush clearing there for I don't know how long. It's just it's it, it's the stupidest thing, most dangerous thing, most destructive thing you could possibly imagine. What occurs to me is. Um, the Indians knew what they were doing long before we ever showed up. But the hardcore environmentalists who kind of hijacked the left 50 years ago, they don't want an environment that is kind or habitable to man. It's not about protecting the forest. It's about hurting people, driving people out, reducing the numbers of people. And it doesn't just have to do with the forest either. So the fact that uh, some some pushback against that is coming out of the Biden administration is the best news I've heard out of this administration, the only good news I've heard out of this administration, and the only good news I expect to hear out of this administration. <laughs> Bill Whittle, uh, Agriculture Secretary Tom Vilsack, uh, acknowledged that this new effort is going to take what he calls a paradigm shift in the U.S. Forest Service. Um, this is an agency that has devoted itself to stamping out fires, and he wants to transform it into an agency that, does, that uh, actually uses what some Native Americans refer to as good fire on forests and range, rangelands to prevent uh, greater blazes. 
is uh, they're actually going to focus on a targeted area, but the targeted area is about the size of Idaho. If you lumped it all together. So it's uh, like 80,000 acres. It's a big, um, or square miles, maybe. Um, it's a big zone. Um, but they said that uh, these hotspots make up only 10% of the fire-prone areas in the United States, but they account for 80% of the risk to communities and homes and people. What do you think uh, about this paradigm shift? And does Vilsack stand a chance against a bureaucracy that has accumulated its wisdom over the course of many decades? Now, no one can answer the second question, but uh, <laughs> as, a, as a person who lives in, uh, in fire zones down here, uh, I agree with you. I mean, I think this is the, I think the Biden administration got this exactly right. We, we don't have Biden derangement syndrome. We're off it. You know, it's like if when he gets something right, he should get the credit for getting something right. It's just kind of unusual. Matter of fact, it's so unusual. Um, I just kind of want to note the time here. It's, uh, we record this on January 18th, <laughs> 2022 at, um, my, my watch has stopped. Um, <laughs> Well, okay, might be so right once more today. That's right. Seriously, yes. If if this is going to be federal policy, then this is long overdue. I remember first hearing about this uh, back at least twenty, maybe thirty years ago, when when a particularly terrible fire broke out in Yellowstone National Park and really, really damaged that park. And what we found was was that for the previous hundred years or so. Uh, Big brains in government decided that anytime we find a fire, we're going to put the fire out because we don't want fires in Yellowstone National Park. So they did. And after 100 years, all of this undergrowth, which normally builds up on a yearly basis, bit by bit, fires come through naturally, burn away that relatively light undergrowth. The trees take a little bit of scorching, but they're evolved for that. And then life goes on, plus the soil's enriched and so on. But when we found out that we were stopping fires for a hundred years, that allowed the undergrowth to build up to the point that when the fire finally did come that was out yeah. of control, it just plain burned Yellowstone down. And so it's not even a question of the Indians' wisdom in this particular regard. It's a question of, of, of nature. You can just stand back and not touch anything and it will take care of itself. Parenthetically, I just might add, since it flew into my head here, that's also true for a lot of airplane accidents. You know, airplanes basically, we don't want to admit this generally speaking, but an airplane's aerodynamically stable, it'll fly itself. Half of the people that get killed in instrument conditions when they fly the airplane into the ground, if they just let go of the controls, they would be fine. The plane would right itself and fly itself just gently right on out of there. Now, as a person who lives down here and has seen some of the appalling, unbelievable horror of, of, of the damage down here, this is exactly precisely what we need to do. We have, a, as you said, an area that's about the size of Idaho. So you don't have to, you don't have to protect all of that. And it's insane to try to do that. You have limited resources. And the thing to do is to build a, a significant number of fire breaks around residential communities and let the rest of the stuff burn. We mentioned on our backstage show, um, it's available to our members only here that, that a, a, the precise inversion of what of what Steve said here in California, Southern California, it will not rain for 10 months. It will not rain a drop for 10 months. And that means that the plants down here are evolved in such a way so that right around this time, by the way, there's a period of about six weeks in Southern California where, where Southern California is greener than Ireland, where you can see unbelievable green because these plants have essentially six to eight weeks to do their growing for the year. And then they're going to dry out and go into that mode, right? So the amount, the amount of undergrowth that can, that can increase in one year is genuinely shocking. And since we have decided to put people in here, and since we've decided to put out the fires, we're stuck in the same situation we had with Yellowstone. Sooner or later, we find a fire that gets out of our ability to control, and then everything goes very, very, very bad. So yes, this is common sense. This is ancient wisdom. In fact, as I said, it's autopilot wisdom. And to hear somebody in any federal agency say, why don't we just let things happen the way they're supposed to happen, means that I think this guy's time on the job is extremely limited. <laughs> Well, a number of years ago, when I briefly served on a county commissioner board, um, at one of our meetings, 
I was asking some questions of the executives who were running the county. They're kind of the managers of the county. And um, I was asking questions about how the county provided social services. In many cases, money was being channeled from the state and the federal government to local county service providers and how we evaluate the success of those programs. Because what I was hearing when they gave their reports before the board was how many clients they had served, how many staff they had, how many hours they had devoted to it, how much money they had spent serving these crucial needs in the community. And my suggestion was that maybe the way to evaluate the effectiveness of social service agencies was by the number of people who no longer needed their services. And instead of focusing on how many hours of service they provided, uh, rather they should focus on how many people no longer needed us. Um, that of course was foolishness and uh, was treated as such. Uh, but it re I was reminded of that when I read this quote from a wildfire uh, expert who's at a University of California campus. He's an engineering professor. And he says this, our scorecard for fire should be about lives saved rather than acres that didn't burn. And if you could do anything to turn around this monstrous bureaucratic ship of state and get it headed in the right direction, if you change the measures of success and then followed naturally with processes that aimed at those changed measures, you could make a vast difference. Now you're gonna step on a lot of people's toes and you're probably gonna wind up firing a lot of people and, and utterly turning over some of these bureaucracies. But the people who remain at least would have the satisfaction that the work that they had done was of value to human beings. And in this case, I think the Forest Service, if they follow in the path that Agriculture Secretary Vilsack is suggesting here, uh, will, uh, will crown themselves with glory in the eyes of the public if they're able to protect human homes and human lives. And uh, I just, I wanna join my colleagues here in saying good job to the Biden administration and uh, Republicans in Congress and in regulatory agencies. This would be a good opportunity to step up and be able to be engaged in this kind of transformation to show that it works. So you can use this as a template to make changes elsewhere. For Bill Whittle and Stephen Green, I'm Scott Ott. Thanks to the members at billwhittle.com for making Right Angle possible. 